Assalamu alaikum. Today we shall talk about Hall effect and derive an expression for Hall voltage. In 1879, Hall observed that when an electric current passes through a material which is placed in a magnetic field, a potential across the edges of the material develops such that the direction of the potential is perpendicular both the direction of the, of the current and the applied magnetic field. So let's assume this is a slab of a material and the current is flowing in this direction and it is placed in a magnetic field where the direction of the magnetic field is out of the material that is out of the paper here. Then across this edge, a potential will develop, a potential difference will develop. Today, we'll study how this potential actually develops and how we can calculate or determine the value of the potential. In doing so, we'll need to use the cross product of the vectors. So let's review that first. So if A and B are two vectors and their cross product A cross B is determined by the right hand rule. And the right hand rule actually says that if you close your fingers uh, in a direction that you move them from A to B, then the thumb shows the direction of the cross product A cross B. Of course, B cross A is equal to the minus of A cross B. That is instead of going from A to B, if you move your fingers from B to A, then the direction will be opposite to going to from A to B. That is the direction for the B cross A, it will be in the opposite direction, that is in the downward. Now let's assume this is a slab. So the current is flowing in this, uh, through this slab, but let's assume instead of current, let's assume the direction of the electron. We know that the direction of the current is opposite to the motion of the electron. So for the time being, let's assume the motion of the electron. So electrons are moving in this direction. Now, if a magnetic field is applied such that the direction of the magnetic field is out of the paper, then these electrons, these moving electrons will feel a force because of the magnetic field. And that is given by this equation. Now, if you use the vector rule, now we will see that the electron will feel a force downward. That is, when they are moving, they will feel a force in this direction. So, electron will start to accumulate in the bottom edge of this material. Now, this can be understood from the right hand rule. So, A is the direction of the uh, electron. So this is the direction of the electron. So if this equals to be the 90 degree, then B is the direction of the magnetic field. So if you are coming from A to B, the direction of the cross product is up. But we have here negative E because we said that these are the electrons. So in that case, the electron will feel a force downward. The direction is flipped because of the negative sign. Now as the electron start to accumulate here, they will induce a positive charge in the upper edge. That means we will have a potential difference across this edge in this direction. Now after a certain time, a steady state will occur. So when more and more electron are flowing, the, there will be a potential difference. And because of the potential difference, the electrons will feel a force. So they are feeling a force from the magnetic field in this direction. And uh, since this is negative, that electron will be repelled from the negative charge and they will be attracted from the positive charge. They will feel a 
force in this direction because of the potential developed across this edge. And in a steady state, the electrons are moving. They will not feel anything because the forces are cancel out. Now, instead of saying the motion of electron or showing the direction of the electron motion, let's show the direction of the current. So this is the everything is same, just we flip the direction and we are saying that this is the direction of the current. On the other hand, we know that in the semiconductor, we have both electron and uh, holes. So in P type material, the hole will be the majority of the carrier and uh, the N type electron are the majority carriers. So if we have holes as a majority carriers in a material, then the, potent the direction of the potential will be opposite because in that case, we have no negative sign here to flip the direction. So, and the, the motion of the direction of the hole is in the same direction of the motion of current. So the direction of the current. So as the hole moves in this direction, they will feel a force downward. Now you can see it here from here. So no holes are moving in this direction. Holes are moving in this direction. So if you flip, if you go from here to this direction, this shows that the force should be in that direction. And after some time, a potential will develop, um, though that this is opposite to the previous one. And uh, at the steady state, the, elect the holes flowing will not feel any force uh, from the magnetic field because that will be canceled out because of the potential. Now the direction of the hole can also be understood seeing this way. So if you uh, put your uh, thumb in the direction of the potential, uh, sorry, motion of the holes and uh, other fingers show the direction of the magnetic field, then F actually shows the direction of the force and F is normal to the palm of your hand. So we want to derive an expression to calculate the voltage difference that is developed because of the magnetic field. For that, let's assume this geometry. This is nothing but the same, but just showing all the components. So this is the X direction. The current is in the X direction and the magnetic field is in the positive Z direction. This is still out of the paper. So this time we just assume that the charge of the carrier is Q. This Q can be positive, can be negative. And we assume that the number density of the carrier is N. That is N is the number of carriers per unit volume. And since there is a current, there will be a drift velocity of the charge carrier, which we assume to be Vx. Now, as we said, in the steady state, the force because of the magnetic field will be same as the force field because of the developed potential of the field in this direction. So in that case, since the uh, angle between the drift velocity and the magnetic field is 90 degree, if we just take the magnitudes, we'll have this one. So this subscript just shows the direction. That is the drift velocity is in the X direction. The magnetic field is in the Z direction. There is Z direction and the electric field that is developed is in Y direction. So, and because of the electric field, we will have a voltage which we call Hall voltage and they are related with this equation, Hall voltage equals to the minus EOI W. Here, W is the width of the material. So you can see it's here, the width of the material. Again, we know that the current can be written in terms of the charge uh, of the carrier and the carrier density, which we write like this way. 
and here Vx is the drift velocity. Now, using this equation, we can find uh, the um, uh, equation for Vh where we'll be able to measure or the find out the polarity of the charge. So we already know that Ey is this equation. So you put it here. So to have Vh equal like this. Now here we have Vxw. We also have Vxw here. So we substitute the Vxw from here to this to have finally the whole voltage like this one. And you can see from the polarity of the whole voltage, we can find out the type of the charge carrier. So if this is, um, uh, so just before saying that, the things in the parenthesis is called Hall coefficient. So you can see from here that if Q is positive, then the Hall coefficient is positive and Q is negative, Hall coefficient is negative. So, uh, in the practical purposes, the polarity of the Hall voltage can be measured by the multimeter. And from that, we can find out which charge carriers are dominating or are available in that material. That's all for today. Thank you.